Hey, welcome back to our channel. We're in the Rockies. I'm Matt and this is Cheryl. Recently, I read on a forum online where somebody had posted that he wanted to go to Yellowstone really badly, but his wife would not go because she was afraid it might erupt while they are on vacation at Yellowstone. <laughs> and this really was a real issue for this guy. He was quite despondent about it. He said the only other option he can think of is that he'll have to go on his own. So this is something that I noticed quite a bit on YouTube is that there's a lot of clickbait about the Yellowstone supervolcano erupting. We wanted to make this kind of fun and educational, so we are gonna play a game called Fact or Fiction about the Yellowstone volcano. And I don't know anything about the Yellowstone supervolcano, so I'm gonna do my best to make good guesses. Now I'm not a geologist or anything like that, or a volcanologist, but uh, <laughs> I like to research, I like to share things. If you are a geologist or volcanologist, then please, if I make you know, if I make a mistake, <laughs> put it in the remarks, okay? Or put it in the comments. So number one, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Fact or fiction, Yellowstone is a volcano. Fact. Yes, it is a fact. Okay, so the, it is a volcano and it is actually classified as a super volcano. And so it's really strange when you drive around Yellowstone because you don't really think of it as a volcano because it's actually a big plateau, it's very flat. But that's because it's so big. So the, the part that erupted is just massive. It's the size of the lower loop that you drive around the park, which takes you three hours to drive around, two and a half hours to drive around, something like that. To be a super volcano, it has to be over, the eruptions have to be over a certain size. I won't bore you with the details, but basically a tremendous amount of magma erupts. If you look at this chart here, you'll see in the green where Mount St. Helens erupted. That's how much magma it shot out. Yellowstone is the first dark orange circle. There's actually two different Yellowstone eruptions that happened in the past that are just massive. So you can see there that it's much, much larger than something even like Mount St. Helens. So is all of Yellowstone a volcano, like that whole national park area? The whole lower loop is the part that exploded. That is crazy. They call that the caldera. In fact, if you look at this map here, you can see that the line, they actually put it on the park map, the caldera. If you visit, for example, Gibbons Falls, that is actually the edge of the volcano. Hmm. I only guessed that it was a super volcano because of all the geysers. Like I just think, oh, well, there has to be volcanic activity underneath, but I would have never guessed that an area that big could be where magma came out. That is blowing my mind, crazy. Yeah, there's a couple of super volcanoes around the world. Yellowstone's the most famous, but there are some others. Okay, number two, fact or fiction. Yellowstone is moving. Well, aren't the continents always moving? That's good. That's a good point. So, true, yes. Okay, that is a good <laughs> point. <laughs> You're right on the right track there. So, <laughs> Yellowstone is moving because of that. So the tectonic plates slide around. So Yellowstone is a hot spot underneath the tectonic plates. And the plates slide over that hot spot. So if you look at this, image here, you can see that Yellowstone, you know, millions of years ago, used to be located in what is now Idaho, actually even as far west as Nevada, what is now Nevada. And in fact, if you visit Craters of the Moon National Monument in Idaho, that's basically Yellowstone in the past. So there's the reason why Craters of the Moon is called that is because there's a lot of lava rock there and it just really is an amazing, crazy yeah. landscape, right? You, you do, you feel like you're on the moon. So if you want that experience, you gotta go visit that part. It is cool. Just make sure you wear some supportive shoes because you could twist an ankle. Now, Idaho <laughs> is like the most mountainous state in the Union, but that stretch that goes through there called the Snake River Plain is quite flat. As you drive through, you'll notice it's quite flat. So like if you, if you go to Yellowstone from say Salt Lake City, you'll drive through a lot of flat area in Idaho and you'll see all this volcanic rock on the, just off the side of the freeway. All that was Yellowstone. Number three, fact or fiction, Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption. Oh. I hope that's false. That is correct. That is fiction. <laughs> so it would be really hard to predict a volcanic eruption, right? So what they say though is uh, Yellowstone um, has erupted three times before in the past and it comes out to an average of 725,000 years between eruptions, um, which means we have about a thousand, a hundred thousand years to go before the next eruption on that cycle. Give or take. Yeah, give or take a couple hundred thousand probably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So that average though is actually meaningless because it's is only it gone as, up a couple of times. Is it as faithful as Old Faithful? <laughs> so the experts say that the volcano is not going to erupt anytime soon. Number four, if Yellowstone erupts, we're all dead. Ooh, like, are you saying everyone in the United States or the entire world? Let's go to the United States. I would say true because we went to an exhibit on when Pompeii erupted and the devastation was miles and miles out. So I'm gonna say true. And that was a normal volcano. Yeah, and it wasn't so, a super volcano. Okay, that's it's mostly true. Since it's a super volcano, it can have these super eruptions, but it doesn't always have super eruptions. In fact, the last eruption that happened was actually the West Thumb, which is a much smaller, if you go to West Thumb today, um, that was its own little eruption right there. So that was much smaller. So it could be a smaller eruption, could be a bigger eruption. But if it is one of those massive eruptions that happened in the past, take a look at this map. You can see how much area was covered in the United States, what is now the United States, by the ash, by the magma and the ash. It covered just about everything west of the Mississippi. So so yeah, if you if you live west of the Mississippi, then, then yeah, you're probably dead. Now, not only that, but a, a major volcanic eruption could cause a major climate change the last time being like a small ice age yellowstone's already cold enough it doesn't need to get any colder there <laughs> i'm feeling pretty good all right bring it on number five earthquakes are increasing at yellowstone indicating an eruption may happen that's false i've been there lots there's never been an earthquake <laughs> there are 1,500 to 2,000 earthquakes per year in Yellowstone. Oh! <laughs> I broke my streak. But you are right. They are not increasing. That was the question. Oh, So okay. it, is, it is fiction. Yellowstone has a ton of earthquakes every year. So earthquakes and volcanic activity, they are closely related, but they're not necessarily cause and effect. Okay, they're closely related because they both happen at fault lines where the where the plates come together and things like that. Look at this map here. They have like two two thousand earthquakes a year, but these are all almost all very minor minor earthquakes that you wouldn't feel. For a little bit of history here, the there, there have been a couple of famous earthquakes that happened in Yellowstone. So the one of the early ones was the first government expedition that was trying to uh, map Yellowstone and figure out what the heck was there. It was in 1871. While these guys were camped on Yellowstone Lake, they had a major earthquake there. Can you imagine, like, this is a totally unknown land, and you visit it, and bam, this major earthquake happens while you're there. So they called this camp, in this picture here, Earthquake Camp. You can visit this area today. <laughs> I was saying on a little off note, when, when things got quarantined and shut down in Utah, it was March 13th, and then a couple days later, I kid you not, we had an earthquake. And yeah. <laughs> first like, earthquake I've ever felt. Yeah, I mean, people were losing their minds. Like the grocery stores were completely cleaned out. We were all freaked out. So I guess maybe we had a similar experience right there. Okay, and then uh, another famous earthquake was in 1959 called the Hebgen earthquake that damaged quite a few things in the park. There was actually a lot of visitors there. It killed over 20 people in a canyon right nearby. I've done a whole nother video on it. It's really quite a remarkable story. So we'll put a link to that in the description. If you like this video, or you're getting anything out of it, please click the like button. We really would appreciate that. And then also let us know if there's anything else that you would like us to research and talk about on our channel. So the last one here, you're doing good, you're 100% so far. Changing geyser behavior is an indicator that something may be afoot with the volcanic eruptions. I would say fact. That is fiction. Oh! <laughs> the geysers change over time. And there's been quite a bit of change in Yellowstone National Park with geyser behavior since the park was first discovered and mapped out and all that stuff. So this question has come up a fair amount lately because there is a particular geyser called Steamboat Geyser, which is the largest one in the world. And it was dormant for many years. It didn't erupt for like 50 years. It would go off sporadically at other times. Suddenly in 2018, 19, and 20, it's been erupting about every five to seven days. And it is, again, the tallest geyser in the world. It erupts three to 400 feet. And so a lot of people are, are, are kind of like, when they hear something like that, they think, oh, whoa, maybe something is happening with the supervolcano, right? But 
they change all the time. So guys, there's a, I read a brochure, I read a park guide from 1916 and he talked about all the active geysers you want to go check out, right? And many of them are not active anymore. I looked, them, I looked a bunch of them up and they're not active anymore. So the park has changed quite a bit since uh, about 100 years ago. A lot of changes happen in the geysers and it doesn't particularly mean anything. Okay, so bottom line, safe to go to Yellowstone? I think you're safe. <laughs> I just need to worry about the bison, right? You don't get too close to the bison. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One final crazy side note that I learned in researching this. Scientists are working on a plan to reduce the possibility of the supervolcano erupting. They want to siphon the heat from the super from, from underneath the Yellowstone. And, and uh, they figure that'll cool things down and the supervolcano won't go up. And it'll also generate electricity for them. Oh, interesting. And this is never gonna happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, they, this is what they wanna do, but the Park Service won't allow anything like that. But I did learn that there are other geothermal electric power plant up there. And that if you could tap into Yellowstone, it could be one of the, it could be like the largest power plant in the world. That's awesome. Crazy, huh? Yeah. Are you any more nervous going to Yellowstone now than before? No. You're good? I'm good. Yep, I'm just gonna look out for those bison. Do you think that guy's wife should just relax and go? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he might have to go there by himself. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.